Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. Jesus changed my life. And he's still in the life-changing business. I believe in the divinity of Christ. I believe in the accuracy of the Hebrew Scriptures. I'm convinced that Moses and the ancient Jewish prophets pointed to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Jesus died to save sinners, and you are a sinner. You know the great thing about blogs? People can say all kinds of things. Strange opinions. Interesting ideas. Well, I have an opinion. Actually, I have a theory. I have a theory about losers, and you probably won't like it. But I'm going to tell you anyway, I think it's important, and I hope you can love me when I'm done. Do you know a loser? Do you love a loser? Feel free to share this information. You can find it as a post on my blog. You can pass it on to others who either are losers or no losers. Perhaps someone you know might be benefited by it. If you want to use this in uh, kind of an awkward way, I guess I would say that uh, you might want to share this with someone who needs to hear the truth, but you're a little uncomfortable telling them the truth yourself. You worry about their feelings. Blame me, it's okay. These are the cold hard facts as I see it. Have you ever met a person who was ignoring the obvious consequences of a lifetime of bad choices? I have a theory about people like that. They are losers. If you are a loser, or if your goal is to shelter losers from the pain of knowing they are losers, you may really not like my theory. It'll be easy to decide. You can know after this very first question. Here's question number one. Do you know what losers do when failure is on the horizon? I am afraid they face their failure with a worse plan than they could have imagined when they still had hope for victory. Is it cold and uncaring to mention this in a public forum? If you think so, the remaining questions and answers will really frustrate you. Question. Do you know how losers adapt to the news that based on their current trajectory, they are losing? Answer, they pretend they are winning. With sadness, I say that losers rarely change direction. They just continue aiming for the bottom. And they live with the ridiculous assumption that they will never reach that unwanted destination because Somehow they think they deserve something better than the giant flush they are facing. Their world is a low-grade storm of human excrement, and everyone around them is expected to hold their nose as the loser ignores the hurricane in their forecast. I find it most surprising that at some childish level, losers act as though things are normalizing. Sometimes they even act like things are getting better when it is clear to every rational person involved in their pathetic life that catastrophe is unavoidable without drastic change. Question. Do you know the most common response from deceived people in mortal distress? These losers to which I'm referring? Answer. Instead of solving their long-term destructive core problem, they seek temporary solutions to how they feel about the wreckage of their life. In other words, they look for ways to take the edge off. As anyone knows who has ever loved an unstoppable loser, the edge remover usually comes through drugs or alcohol. Often, their loss is amplified through disastrous relationships with Yes, you guessed it, other losers. It is as if they form partnerships with the morally bankrupt, seeking peace through the doctors of chaos. Consider this short series of questions that do not even require my answers, 
One, do you know the likelihood of success among bankrupt losers that ignore the facts of their imminent ruin? Two, can you guess what happens to losers who are influenced by people who set the pace as career failures? Three, do you know the result of getting high from a position so low that the only incentive to come down is to remember how you got high? Let me, let me ask this. Do you know anyone who has filled their life with bad decisions and or wrong relationships? Now be honest. I mean, if you don't know anyone currently headed for hell, you're probably not paying attention. I want to paraphrase a modern platitude. You see, I reject the idea that there are many paths to God. From what I have seen, it is more realistic to say that there are many roads to hell. If we consider our favorite losers, we can see a wide variety of paths to destruction. The map is at the bottom of bottles, wrapped in capsules, prescribed in pills, and pumped through needles. The train leaves every happy hour, and the pleasant roadside distractions stay open day and night at porn sites, phone centers, and illicit sex schemes throughout the information highway. Okay. You guessed it. Now comes the preaching. But what you may not have guessed is the intended audience of my words. This message is not intended to be limited to garden variety losers. God does not lump losers into a dirty little club to make so-called normal people look comparatively clean so they can feel self-righteous. If we are honest, modern society permits some people to eat their way, smoke their way, spend their way, or even work their way to hell. There are many ways to eternal disaster, but the narrow path to life is through the author of life. But somehow the vast majority of people will persist in rejecting the offer of life provided by God. As a result, judgment will come and it will be more tragic than anything imagined. And it will come as a surprise to proud people everywhere. Very briefly, I want to remind you about what happened to my people. The ancient Jews of 8th century before the Christian era, before the common era, however you want to say it, 8th century B.C. Israel. Isaiah wrote, The Lord of hosts has purposed it, to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. This was the message of warning presented to a proud people. The prophet told a nation inhabited by a people who fortified themselves against their enemies. They had forgotten the true founder of their nation and the real author of their freedom. He wrote, But ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. The people of Jerusalem had created their own fortification against enemies they could anticipate. But the arm of the flesh could never prepare for the type of trouble that was foretold when the immeasurable anger of God was unleashed on an unrepentant nation. You see, horror was to be in the headlines when the people of God were visited with what the scriptures call their day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God. Permit me to suggest to any individual loser or even a great nation that angers God to the point of judgment, maybe they're not fit for God's continued blessings. Any person or nation in that condition is ripe for destruction, pain, and suffering. But even a loser or a nation in that condition can repent. In fact, God desired that Israel would be spared from the tragedy ahead. The prophet wrote, And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning. Unfortunately, like most losers and many defiant people, my people answered with more contempt. Their response did nothing to lessen the punishment. Their answer to a holy call to repentance was tragic. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. 
a loser or a nation on the brink of disaster should avoid doing what people with hardened hearts do when warned of pending problems. They numbed their already deadened senses with more mind-altering substances to fill their final moments of freedom with a false sense of happiness. They had one more for the road before facing an angry God. They threw a party to cover their pain. Losers do that by habit. It is a surefire way for a few minutes of temporary peace. Nations do that by nature. Instead of facing obvious depravity, proud nations amass wealth through greed and dominance through oppression. If required, they retain power through violence. Now, whereas God desires to bless the humble, he judges those that are proud. In the case of ancient Israel, God brought them down through more wicked enemies who were more violent and more oppressive. Yet instead of humbling themselves at God's warning, they ignored the prophets and increased their wickedness. The Lord of hosts has purposed it to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. When I consider these words from the Bible, it makes me think of losers. You know my theory about losers. Losers are people who ignore the obvious consequences of a lifetime of bad choices. Nations can be like that too. A generation has continued to kill babies, ignore the poor, promote wickedness, remove every restraint from evil, and pursue every opportunity to place gag orders on the truth that is as it's like they've sought to outlaw righteousness. The worst thing is that even God's people have promoted blatant error. Evil is said to be good. Abomination is celebrated while holiness is mocked. Some churches promote foolishness. They prosper through gambling with souls and sanctify acts which are forbidden. Scams, scoundrels, and scum are celebrated. Where forgiveness was intended, damnation has replaced salvation. And the word of the Lord was clear to all who would hear, but none heard. The result was absolutely catastrophic. Will anyone listen? The words ring in my ears and I do not know what to do with them. So I will just read them to you and let you do with them what you will. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste and turns it upside down and scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Do you hear this? Think about the society in which we live and the financial problems that just are crushing families, businesses, banks. Let me tell you what is of grave concern to me. Instead of solving our long-term destructive core problem, as a society we seek temporary solutions to offset how we feel about the wreckage of our culture. We look for ways to take the edge off, as anyone who reads a newspaper can readily identify. We've reached the place where it appears we are unstoppable losers. Our financial system teeters on the edge, and we pursue edge removers that have become more creative and more costly. 
violence fills the earth as widows and orphans pay the price. The loss of honor among power-hungry leaders is amplified through the disastrous relationships entered into by scheming manipulators. Partnerships are formed with the morally bankrupt, and we seek peace through the doctors of chaos. But they have no peace, so they have none to share. Do you know the likelihood of success among morally bankrupt leaders who ignore the facts of our imminent ruin? There is no chance for success apart from confession, repentance, and restitution. Can you guess what happens to a nation when it reaches the point that it is led by losers who have been influenced by losers for an entire generation? Let me ask this. Do many modern aspects of modern life cause you to wonder if maybe we are living with the results of bad decisions and wrong relationships? Be honest, if you can ignore the confusion that fills our world, you are not paying attention. But I have an answer to this confusion. And if you will listen, you will find comfort. It's right back in the words of Isaiah. O oh Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. I do believe in a God that we can turn to in our struggles, even now. No matter what loss you have experienced, no matter what results you have faced because you are a loser, or someone you love is a loser, or you live in a nation that appears to act like a loser from time to time, there's really good news. In the eighth verse of chapter 25 of the Hebrew prophet Isaiah, we read, He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. I hope you're getting a hint of who I'm talking about. It shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Turn to the Lord. Commit your life to God. Don't talk about religion. Don't place yourself in a in, as though you're somehow sufficiently good in and of yourself. You're not as bad as the loser that you know. You need the Lord. Forgiveness is only available through Christ, and it's available to all who turn to Him in faith. Give it a shot. What do you got to lose? And I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. If you're like me, you've probably heard that scripture since you were young. But one might ask, what does this really look like? Well, there are two ways that you can bless Israel in a very tangible way. One of those ways is to go. The other way is to plant trees. You see, Israel is a modern miracle in the desert of the Middle East because believers like us plant trees. So I'll ask, do you want to bless Israel? For every $25 contribution that you make, we're going to plant a tree in your name and we'll send you a certificate that you can hang on the wall and display proudly that you're standing with and you have blessed Israel. So give me a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us on the web at crosstalk.org. Let us know how many trees you want to plant. And if you're able, join us on our next tour of the Holy Land and plant one with your own hands. The word friends in Hebrew is chavarim. Friends are very important to all of us here at Crosstalk International, and the Circle of Kavarim is our monthly giving program. Our Circle of Friends help Crosstalk International reach thousands of people every month. If you're like me, you enjoy a cup of premium coffee from the local coffee shop each morning. For the price of just two cups of coffee per week, you can help support a Crosstalk missionary 
You can reach a lost person through the Today with God project, or you can help teach about our Jewish Savior through Crosstalk Television. All of that for just $32 a month. It gets even better. We'll send you our very own Crosstalk blend of coffee each month just to say thanks for helping the ministry. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us on the web at www.crosstalk.org backslash coffee. Join the circle of Chavarim. Well, we've been talking about losers. Tough subject. A lot of losers out there. Uh, I've been a loser. So I can speak from firsthand experience. I know that it hurts. And it hurts people around us as well. But God wants to make us into winners. Sometimes he does it in a way that's perhaps a little unpredictable. I was sad, and uh, it was on the anniversary of my father's death. Some of you may know that uh, because of my faith, I didn't have the opportunity to, to be at my father's funeral. I was prohibited, and that hurt. I love my father. But uh, I was in the prayer room on the anniversary of my father's passing and I was just feeling bad and a friend showed up and it just hurt and I wrote a countrified sad song called I'm feeling like a loser again Did I wake up this morning with an L on my head? Bumped into a good friend, it was something he said. I needed a kind word, not a stick in the eye. Now I'm feeling like a loser again. Oh Lord, I'm feeling like a loser again. But all I could find was a textbook example of a Pharisee defined. I needed comfort. I got judgment instead. I'm feeling like a loser again. Oh, Lord, I'm feeling like a loser again. So I sat down and wrote him a letter. I gave him the last piece of my mind. Friends really should treat sad friends better. Some friends write songs and some songs are unkind. So I keep to myself. Though it's bad company But I won't rip my guts out My counsel is free I threw out that letter And rewrote this song From the heart of a loser like me Only losers have need of a savior Losers can't fix it themselves. It's losers God loves, and it's losers he wins through a loser who won on a cross. If you need a friend for some comfort to share, don't turn to a man in his own world of care. Come unto him who is willing to hear the voice of a loser like me. The load is still heavy, the road is still long. I have a friend and I wrote him a song. 
I got his comfort. He took my shame. I'll never be a loser again. Now listen, if you're feeling like a loser again, my friend, if you're feeling like a loser like me, it's losers God loves and it's losers he wins through a loser who won on a cross. Through a loser who won on a cross. And I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. If you're like me, You've probably heard that scripture since you were young. But one might ask, what does this really look like? Well, there are two ways that you can bless Israel in a very tangible way. One of those ways is to go. The other way is to plant trees. You see, Israel is a modern miracle in the desert of the Middle East because believers like us plant trees. So I'll ask, do you want to bless Israel? For every $25 contribution that you make, we're going to plant a tree in your name and we'll send you a certificate that you can hang on the wall and display proudly that you're standing with and you have blessed Israel. So give me a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us on the web at crosstalk.org. Let us know how many trees you want to plant and if you're able, join us on our next tour of the Holy Land and plant one with your own hands. The word friends in Hebrew is kavarim. Friends are very important to all of us here at Crosstalk International, and the Circle of Kavarim is our monthly giving program. Our Circle of Friends help Crosstalk International reach thousands of people every month. If you're like me, you enjoy a cup of premium coffee from the local coffee shop each morning. For the price of just two cups of coffee per week, you can help support a Crosstalk missionary. You can reach a lost person through the Today with God project, or you can help teach about our Jewish Savior through Crosstalk Television. All of that for just $32 a month. It gets even better. We'll send you our very own Crosstalk blend of coffee each month just to say thanks for helping the ministry. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us on the web at www.crosstalk.org backslash coffee. Join the circle of Chavarim. Because he loves me, I will follow him. Because he loves me, because he loves me, because he loves me, I will follow him. Because he loves me, I 